Hi everybody, it's Brendan from c21teaching.com.au here. In today's Flip Teacher Professional Learning video, I'm going to give you a introduction into some of the ways you can use Google Sheets as a method of storing and recording your assessment and diagnostic testing data and the ways that you can use the formulas that are within spreadsheets or that you can put into spreadsheets to make some of the calculations for determining marks and percentages easier and quicker for you and so to start off with you obviously want a clear spreadsheet uh, in Google Sheets open up a brand new Google Sheets I would call it something along the lines of assessment and testing you might need to give it a class name uh, a year depending on the structure how many classes you teach and what you're actually going to be using this for. Uh, for me personally, I would simply go with 2015 assessment data, but that's easy for me because I'm a primary school teacher, so I only have the one class. If you're a high school teacher, you might need to change that format. The next thing you need to do is you need to decide what you're actually going to be using this for. Are you going to be using this for recording weekly formative data? Are you going to be using this to record diagnostic data from beginning of year, mid-year and end of year and doing comparisons on the way through? What is the purpose for each specific set of data. That will determine to a degree how you structure each worksheet. So to start off with, one of the things that I've been using Google Sheets for this year, using it to record diagnostic data at the start of the year and then again at the end of the year because that allows me to be able to see growth. So to start off with, I'm going to give this worksheet a name. So I'm going to click on sheet three down here, select name. I'm going to call this spelling column A. I'm going to make that the student names. Uh, now obviously the format you use might vary depending on your particular context. You might have boys and then girls, you might have straight alphabetical order, you might have the order is up to you. It doesn't particularly matter, but I would recommend if you're using multiple worksheets to record multiple sets of data, perhaps for literacy, for numeracy, for science, naming criteria, all the way through. So name, I've got student names there. The next column is going to be term one. Next column after that, column C is going to be term four. I'm then going to have growth in column D and the percentage, which is the growth as a percentage in column E. I like things formatted a particular way, so I'm going to make sure that's all centered. Actually, this will all be centered here. Okay, now I know that the test was out of a particular mark, but I actually want to know what was the class average H8 what was the class average at each point and what was the test out of each time. So I know that for both both tests it was out of 70 so I can go ahead and I can merge that cell there to 70. I want to know the average for the class in term 1, the average for the class in term 4, the average growth and the average growth as percentage. So I need to put in a simple average formula rather that will do the work for me. Put in a simple average formula equals AVER average select the cells I want it to average done obviously it's got div 0 because there's no data in there now because I know that for this row here I'm going to be using the same range but in the next column across for each of them so if I click and drag across it will automatically div 0 in each of those cells and if I click on this one average B B2 to B16 C2 to C16 C2 to C16, D2 to D16, and E2 to E16. It's done it automatically. This little uh, square in the bottom right hand corner of the selected cell, if I hover over that so that I've got the plus symbol there and I click and drag to the right, it will bring that average formula across to each of those cells that I have highlighted and adjust it for the column. You can also do it going down rows. If you've got it at the end of a in the end of a column, it will do it for you there as well. So now if I start to put in some data, the average will automatically happen, but I haven't finished setting up my formulas. I want to know the growth. So to work out my growth, I simply work out T4, term 4 score, minus term 1. So equals the sum, term 4, minus term 1. Hit enter. At the moment, there's no data, so it's zero. Now, again, if I put that, if I select that cell there, click and drag this one, it automatically puts in the data, changes those to zeros, and you can see that it has changed the row number automatically C2, B2, 3, 4, and so on. It's automatically changed it. And again, I can do the same thing for percentages. So, equals sum, open brackets. Now, I want to work out what was the percentage of the growth against term one. So to work that out, I need to take the growth. Uh, let me just see if I remember this correctly. Take the growth, multiply it by the original, and then divide it by 100. So that's multiplied by the original score because we want to know what was the growth as a percentage of the original score multiplied by 100. Select enter. Now, again with this one, because it's a dynamic formula, it's it will be changing the reference each time. I can simply click and drag. Now, again, if you want to color in some of these cells to make them 
look pretty. It's, I, I like to do that. Personally, it's just how I, my brain operates. Things need to be uh, color coded. You can go ahead and do that. You can also set up conditional formatting. I'm a huge fan of conditional formatting. I highlight the cells that I want to conditionally format. So click the format option come down to conditional formatting. So what you can do here is you can tell Google Sheets that if in these cells that I've highlighted, you can go through the rules. So if the contents of those cells are greater than zero, then green background. I can add another rule. If for the cells that are highlighted, it is less than zero, I can put it as red, done. So there's two rules now that are applied to those particular cells. So if I go into term one, let's say so term one was out of 70, if student one got 55 in term one, straight away I can see it because I haven't put anything for term four, their growth is negative 55 and is negative, negative. that's not right, that must be divided by and multiply. There we go, that's better, that's better, uh, is negative 100%. Now, obviously, I want to round this down. I only want it to one decimal place, so I go there. So let's go ahead and punch in some random data. So the test was out of 70. Let's go ahead and put in some random data here. All right, so we can see that it has automatically calculated the growth and the percentages as well as the average has changed as I've added in each particular score. So if I come to term four, I'm entering my data in and it will automatically change columns D and E will automatically change to show me the growth both as a raw score and as a percentage of growth from the original score that that student received in term one. So let's go ahead and put in some random data. So you can see that it has automatically changed these cells to reflect red or green on whether they've had growth. Now there's one student here that they stayed the same. They had 58 in term one, 58 again in term four. So they're zero and zero, which means those cells are white. You can set them to be yellow. Uh, there was that other option there to do as a yellow background, but I wouldn't personally, I wouldn't worry about that. You can if you want to. It's fantastic because you can see that yes, this student has gone up, this student's gone down. You can see the individual students, but you can also see the class average. So that is one very simple way. That is a very, very basic structure for a recording some diagnostic testing. You can go further. Um, this is an example of some mathematics data. This gives you a bit of an idea as to the level of detail that you can go into. This is not even the full test. Again, you can have a look at this. A lot of the structure of it is the same. The way that I've structured this particular part of this uh, worksheet is exactly the same as the previous page. The only difference is the detail is that I've broken down. I've added in all of these extra columns so that I can have side by side comparison of the term data. So the blue is term one, the pinky orangey is term four. And so I can look and I can see a raw comparison of a particular section, but at the end, I can see the totals against each other and the growth. Uh, again, there's two very simple ways. Feel free to rewind and rewatch sections of that if you need to, it's very, very quick. If there's a particular format, a particular way that you're trying to achieve with recording your data and you're just not quite sure how to get there, feel free to contact me on Twitter or on the contact form on c21teaching.com.au. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.